sounds really childish, but I like playing around in the lab. Um, it's like a little workshop. Um, I have loads of toys that you can kind of mess around with. I deal with brains all day, every day. <laughs> We're just trying to understand how the brain works um, at the most fundamental level. What each neuron does, how it fires, how it behaves in a circuit, how different circuits and networks interact with each other. You know, what happens in our brains when we're seeing something or hearing something or touching something. So yeah, so that's half of the brain on this side, that's the cortex, it's half a hemisphere. Can you when, tell me when I... Yeah, whenever you're ready. Okay. I think everyone draws. As a kid, just some people stop. I don't really know why. <laughs> I just kept drawing. For me, it's just part uh, of the thinking process. So I need to draw. This is the very first stage. So here I'm just sketching as if I'm just writing out of out the top of my head, just how things come to my mind. and. The drawings are not in any way finished. It's just I needed to decide what goes in each page and how much space are going to take in each page, how to distribute things. The old comic would be a mix between adventures and kind of brief explanations. Of course, the pictures are nice and the metaphors are useful, but it's really important to explain the scientific notion in a clear and correct way. So Anna is going to help me with the expanditor bit. The goal of the neurocomic is to explain scientific ideas to a general audience in a sort of fun, engaging, clear way. Having a fun story or like an adventure to sort of hold everything together, you're more likely to engage with an audience than if you just show them raw data or get them to read papers which are obviously just going to be too difficult. When I was a kid there was this TV French animation I think it was called something like Once Upon a Time Life and I was not actually thinking about that when I started to draw the comic but many people pointed out the resemblance. The universe. The development that was to lead to man. And the great thing is that I, you don't really notice all the science. Even stuff I was not aware of when I was a kid, uh, I later on realized it was actually kind of scientifically correct. Hundreds of millions of spermatozoa set out for an onslaught. Only 1% of them will succeed in breaking through the barrier created by the neck of the womb. If you look at it, every single detail is really based on evidence. I was influenced because as a kid I really loved that stuff. The main thing is to have a story um, and think about how to tell it. Because you're constrained in science by the facts and by the findings, you just don't have the freedom to sort of express yourself in a sort of fictional way. Whereas with Neurocomic, it's really liberating because you can just... If you want a character to go and do something wacky, you just, just do it. <laughs> We came up with this idea of uh, a character, a sort of general character, it doesn't have a name, it's just this man, 
uh, which get sucked into the brain. Huh? And looking for a way out, it gets to learn about the brain. It's not particularly brave, it's trying to avoid problems and actually it's kind of bored by the science, it doesn't really want to listen to this stuff, it just wants to get out of there. So this is a spiny neuron, which is a brain cell, and you have lots of dendrites um, coming out from the cell body, which is at the middle, and all these dendrites receive information from other neurons. Each different neuron that I've looked at, to me, has a different character, and it sounds really stupid, but um, I think they definitely have their own kind of personalities, or maybe it's just me projecting that onto the things that I'm seeing. I also give them names. <laughs> there was one called Sanchez. <laughs> one was called uh, Ula. <laughs> oh, then there was Rodriguez and Gonzalez and Foxtrot. Um, yeah, Sorry. but don't put that in. <laughs> It wasn't that difficult to come up with metaphors because the brain, I think, is really an amazing organ. So it's full of nice settings and nice characters and parts, which they, they're very graphical, so they, they work very well with comics. It would be difficult to explain difficult neuroscience concepts without the use of metaphors. If it's not something that people can relate to, then they're not going to be interested in it. I think the way the brain works, um, I think it yeah, lends itself very well to metaphors. When you do look at neurons, they actually do seriously look like different types of trees. There's no room for metaphors in scientific papers, mainly because you want it to be transparent and you want it to be just data. The more raw it is, the better it is for people being able to understand what had happened and what results you got out. I think this can also help science a lot because if you, if you think of something in a different way, by analogy, you may have new ideas about the thing itself, which if you didn't make a metaphor, you wouldn't really think of. through the preliminary drawings. I'm going to see whether his scientific contact is uh, correct. This little neurotransmitter there. Yeah. Why can't that be a woman? If it becomes too sciencey. Um, but it has to be about science. What, what is the role of this character? Who is this character? That's not my idea. <laughs> <laughs> you can't steal my idea. You're asking me whether it's interesting reading scientific papers. <laughs> I mean, you, you can tell me. Do you, do you think this looks interesting? <laughs> Doing well. Drawing is almost done. Uh, we just need to refine the text, especially on the scientific parts with Anna. It's been really difficult to know when we should go for more story and when we should go for more science. That's a compromise that we've had to make because you just can't get all the science in 
that you want. So we kind of have to think what, what's, what's going to be more useful for the story because that's the primary aim. If you want to be really sort of scientific and correct about everything, you would have, it's not, it, it, the story wouldn't really flow because you have to say, this is the theory, but there is the exception. So sometimes you just have to forget about the exception. Some people say that these kind of drawings are sort of a little lies to tell a bigger truth. You have necessary to omit some details, so you feel like you are kind of lying to the reader, but it's to make the main concept clear. You don't want to be woken up from that sort of dream world where you're sort of in the book. Sometimes by having certain panels which have a bit too much scientific explanation. It's a bit like having a cold bucket poured over your head. You're sort of getting into the book and it's all really fun. And you're like, oh, what's going to happen to this character next? And then an MDA receptors are da 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 da. And um, it just broke up the flow of the story. She, she's really into the story and she keeps asking me for like more action and more characters and more things happening, uh, which, no, it's great. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's fun, but I keep telling her, yeah, but you should be the scientist. You should be, you, should, you tell me the facts, not, not, <laughs> not ask me for more adventures. I'm actually surprised with how much science I'm prepared to cut out just to, for the sake of keeping the story going. This is nice. I think simplification and uh, metaphor is a valuable thing for science itself. And scientists force you to think about it more. We know what is a neuron and how it works, but if you think of it in a different way and you play with the idea for a bit, maybe it's going to give you new insight. I think he, he likes to think that he's an artist. But he's actually a scientist, I think, because he's, he's so insistent on making sure that the science comes across. Huh? In the end, it's our brain animating these stories. Like nothing will happen, it's just ink on paper. And I, I find it really amazing that comics really rely on the power, the, the imagination power of our brain. <laughs> I've always got some sort of ideas floating around in my head where I have to kind of get them out. I love that freedom. I don't think that what? I get that freedom in science because you're always constrained with facts and evidence and you're always trying to sort of squeeze it into this narrow shape so that it fits. Huh? So I will always have to do something like fiction. Huh?